Hey friends, I encountered a very silly argument on YouTube, and I thought I'd share it, sorry, and then talk a bit about how I might address it, absurd as it is, and here it is. So I have some not so exciting news. I put out a video, it was about a year and a half ago, talking about this piece of wood here that I'm waiting for it to evolve into like a butterfly or maybe a camel or something. Um, sad update, nothing has evolved yet. Um, up, update maybe, you know, a year and a half from now when I release another video, but we might have to wait like 3 billion more years. But right now, uh, there's no updates. I don't see any arms or eyeballs, um, evolving out of this yet, but Hey, maybe in the future, we'll see what the happens. The argument that evolution is wrong because my scrap of wood hasn't grown eyeballs is one of the worst I've ever seen. Evolutionary biology makes no claim, no prediction, not even a reasonable inference from the theory that this would happen. So let's just dismiss it out of hand. You're all smart enough to see the bad reasoning there. So to take another approach, if he has a block of wood, I have a small piece of rock. No, I'm not going to compound the fallacies by saying that Christianity makes failed claims about it because we all recognize that religion doesn't make extravagant claims about this rock, at least. We don't expect it to sprout eyes if we pray over it. So its failure to sprout eyes says nothing about the validity of Christianity. Neither an atheist like me nor a fervent believer like the guy in the, that video believes that. Instead, I'll just talk about this rock as it is. It's a nice little rock. I use it as a worry stone, you know, uh, a rock of a convenient size that you can rub between thumb and forefinger. Uh, usually these are smooth and shiny and pretty, but as you can tell, that's not the case here. My rock is rough and angular and black. What's special about it is that I know its provenance, and I've kept it in my coat pocket for about 35 years. I know, I'm surprising myself. I've held this rock when I learned that my father had died. I held this rock when I learned that my sister had died, when my grandparents had died, and when my brother died. I find it reassuring because, you know, the stone endures. And that's what I need to consider in those moments of loss. But of course, there are also happy moments. For instance, I know exactly when and where I got this chip of rock. My oldest son and I were fossil collecting in western Utah back in the late 80s. Uh, if you want to see a happy eight-year-old, you give him some eye protection and a hammer and tell him to smash open rocks. And that's what we did together. I picked up this little fragment and dropped it into my pocket where it has remained for a few decades now. Not the same pocket, it gets, it gets moved around when I change my coats, things like that, but it's there. This was collected near Delta, Utah, where we had permission to collect from the scrap pile of a commercial excavation. This rock was from the Wheeler Shale, a Cambrian deposit, which is about 505 million years old. We were looking for trilobites. They were all over the place. Split open a piece of shale, and what you found was a slab of ancient seabed, and there were trilobites and trilobite fragments, and discarded trilobite exoskeletons everywhere. I have several such slabs that I kept, and I, that I use as paperweights and inspirations for contemplation like this one okay it's it's not it's not museum quality stuff like i said we are collecting this from the discard pile of a commercial excavation so there these are kind of the leftover scraps but the thing is that you look in there and there is a fragment of a trilo trilobite I've got others with even more pieces of trilobite in them. Okay, so this is awesome. Trilobites are awesome. They flourish from the Cambrian until the great dying at the end of the Permian 250 million years ago. It ought to be humbling to consider this great diverse clade 
that had a thriving empire for 270 million years until they too went extinct. The piece I keep in my pocket has no trilobites in it. Okay, uh, it, it's just it's just a convenient size, and it's from the same set of rocks. So um, I just love having a memento of half a billion years within easy reach that I can touch whenever I want to be reminded of my place in the universe. It helps keep my perspective appropriately balanced. In the words of the preacher in Ecclesiastes, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. Probably not forever, but close enough. Half a billion years, uh, that's, that's close enough to forever for me. But this is what troubles me about Christian apologists like the fellow in that video. They are happy to abuse science to make false claims that they think rebut a naturalistic view of the universe. They will point to trees and mountains and declare they had to be created by God, and God is good, but they know nothing about the deep, rich history of trees and mountains. You would think that a Christian would naturally embrace science, and historically they have, and strive to have a greater knowledge of what they consider God's creation. But no, especially among the most fervent evangelical Christians, they consider their ideology and dogma far more precious than understanding the reality of the universe. When I try to put myself in their shoes, it seems tragic. How can they hope to humble themselves before their Lord if they're incapable of humbling themselves before the awesome majesty of the world that they believe their God created? They can't. Humility is not the desired goal. They prefer to wallow in their arrogance and their false, false confidence that they know it all. There's little we can do to help people so deeply mired in their ignorance. All I can suggest is that they, and the rest of us too, reach out and touch reality. Pick up a stone, look at a star, wade in a stream, Try to understand it as well as you can, setting aside the unwarranted nonsense of ancient dogma. Get educated. It'll open your mind and make you a better person. And that's all I had to say.